Hey guys, Alex Hamilton, U Rise Education. Right now we're standing at Gilman Hall on the historic Johns Hopkins University campus in Baltimore, Maryland. We're going to take you all around the beautiful campus this afternoon. Located just off of Charles Street in the Charles Village neighborhood of Baltimore, JHU's Homewood campus hosts their undergraduate programs. First thing you'll notice is the green space, the beach, a campus favorite for hanging out, as well as the Homewood Museum, a historic landmark that welcomes visitors to campus. Walking up the hill, you'll get a glimpse of the freshman quad and GHU's Georgian architecture, including some dorms, such as the AMRs. Turn left and you'll get a closer glimpse at the museum. Past that, you'll see the side of Eisenhower Library, which we'll check out later, as well as Remsen Hall, which contains lecture halls. You can also take a peek at Krager Hall, which holds classrooms for the Krager College of Arts and Sciences on Kieser Quad. Before we look at Kieser in greater depth, let's head north to get a closer glimpse of some of the other academic buildings, such as Dunning Hall, part of the Department of Biology, as well as some scenery, such as the reclining figure statue. Macaulay Hall contains research laboratories, and it faces Mergenthaler, which hosts some humanities departments. Between that and Remsen, you'll find plenty of benches for outside study. Past Macaulay Hall, and you'll see the new chemistry building, whose classrooms face the Levi Building and Mud Hall, which contains science classrooms and lecture halls. Head north, down the steps, to see the Red Sail statue, which face the undergrad teaching labs. This will bring you to the Maryland Space Grant Observatory and the Bloomberg Center for Physics and Astronomy, which face the JHU practice fields. The Blue Jays play D3 sports, except for their D1 lacrosse, which plays in the Big Ten and is ranked among the best in the nation. Across the street, you'll see the Muller Space Telescope building. Walking along Bowman Drive, you can see the Johns Hopkins Club, which hosts social events for the community. Continue walking south, and you'll be reunited with Mergenthaler and Remsen. Continue between them to reach GHU's famed Kieser Quad. Next to Mergenthaler, you'll see our starting point, the 100-year-old Gilman Hall, whose classrooms and offices represent the heart of the university. Gilman sits next to Ames Hall of the Whiting School of Engineering, symmetrically opposed to Krager Hall across the terrace. Short walk from Eisenhower Library and the other buildings of the quad. Head south down the steps and you'll find yourself on Wyman Quad. Levering Hall hosts campus eateries, while the Trobe hosts civil and mechanical engineering. From here, you can also see Gilman Hall. 
Garland Hall is an administrative building with services including the Career Center and financial aid. While Hodson Hall contains a series of high-tech classrooms. Past Garland, you'll be on Decker Quad and face Clark Hall, home to GHU's famed biomedical engineering. Off in the distance, you'll see Wyman Park, Mason, which holds the Office of Undergrad Admissions, Malone, which hosts the Computer Science Department, and Hackerman for Computational Science and Engineering. Outside Garland, you'll see the names of those who have contributed to GHU along the Founder Wall. Back on Wyman, walk along Barton Hall, home to Electrical and Computer Engineering, to see Shriver Hall, a music venue, plus Schaefer Hall and Maryland Hall, an engineering building. Next to Shriver is Croft Hall, which connects to Schaefer, which holds classrooms. Here, you'll see the Milton S. Eisenhower Library, or MSE, the largest on campus. While four of its six stories are underground, all floors have windows so students can enjoy natural light while they study. To its right, Brody Learning Commons hosts state-of-the-art study spaces. Charles Commons hosts additional student living spaces. Along Charles, you can see some historic buildings, including the University Baptist Church. North of campus, you'll find JHU's Barnes & Noble Bookstore. In East, you'll see the world-famous Johns Hopkins Hospital, affiliated with the equally renowned Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Downtown, you'll find the Johns Hopkins Carey School of Business. Which sits right on Baltimore's Inner Harbor. And that's just a brief overview of JHU's Homewood campus and a peek into their presence in downtown Baltimore. As you may have surmised, JHU is one of the leading private research institutions in the United States, and that brings a very low acceptance rate of around 10%. With that in mind, let's take a look at the one required essay prompt and see how you can utilize that space to maximize your chances at Hopkins. Here's the prompt. This prompt brings a little bit of a spin on the traditional Y school prompt. You can certainly focus on the academic side of things if you have a lot of content to get across, but at the same time, if you want to discuss more about your background, culture, or identity, you can do that as well. Therefore, you don't have to focus solely on JHU's top-notch academics. Instead, you could talk about any meaningful experiences you've underwent in a cultural affinity group or in a travel experience and you can discuss how those connect to the diversity at Hopkins or to their study abroad programs. Whatever you choose to discuss, you'll wanna make sure that you emphasize your response to the last part of that question, what you hope to get out of the experience. Remember, a college experience is a two-way street, so here you also wanna to explain to the admissions committee how you will improve the university community based off of your experiences. Plus, since JHU possesses strong ties with the city of Baltimore, you're going to have a plethora of opportunities to participate in off-campus service. Be sure to make note of that. 
And those are my thoughts. So be sure to let me know in the comments down below what you think about Hopkins and the cutting edge research that it conducts. Also be sure to like and subscribe if you found content like this helpful and I'll be sure to produce more videos like this. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.